Everyone, this is our first attempt at a conversation following up on Bart's message. And Kathleen and Bart and David, I'm here um, on Zoom doing this collaboratively, but all from our homes while we're quarantined. So welcome to this follow-up conversation. We're talking about Bart's message called Undisturbed, which is on the website. You can take a look at it. So uh, you can find the whole story there, but we're just going to follow up and chat about some things that came to mind to all of us during uh, the, the message and Kathleen's music that followed. And Kathleen, I was really struck by the music. Thank you for that. Thank that fits you. so well. Um, as I was looking at the music, was that first song a song that you wrote? No, actually, um, you know, I should have probably noted who wrote it. It's a new song from the Porter Skate newest album, which has a whole bunch of um, neighbor songs. So it's all about loving your neighbor and um, nothing to fear. It's actually a song that I've sung at church a couple of times. Uh -huh. In fact, I think we sang it two weeks ago. Linda sang it. Um, but it just has been on my heart for these last two weeks. And I wanted to put it, put it out there. Love it. Rolling around in my head. Perfect for these times. It looks great. That's cool. One thing we were talking about just a couple of moments ago was that uh, from our heart is the place that is just resonating right now. Um, so thanks for the music from the heart. And Bart, thanks for the message from the heart. I really appreciated that. I loved your story about being on the back of the horse. Um, I, had, I wondered if I should be telling a funny story in such a difficult moment, but then I thought, no, I think we need a little humor as well. And, and it did illustrate my point. It's a good oh. image, actually. It's a great one. And it's true. I mean, it's not exaggerated. It's, it's well, everything I do when I preach is a little exaggerated, but you know, <laughs> not exact. My kids used to say that people would say, did your dad, did all those things really happen to your dad? Are these his stories? And they would say, yeah, they, they happen, but our, our dad does remember large. It's <laughs> <laughs> why you're a good speaker because you tell it in the way that, that it's, exciting uh, and well believe me that horse ride was exciting <laughs> <laughs> i thought i was gonna die several times um and that was the point of the talk was basically in the midst of fear uh there's ways to reach back towards the past and temptations to reach forward to the future um but calming ourselves in the moment is really what you were trying to describe and i was thinking i was reverse engineering that for myself what do i do in the moment and Kathleen I was actually thinking about music so I'd like to hear a little bit what uh, you're thinking about this but when I am realizing that I'm consumed in the moment by fear or anxiety or worry or something getting out of my own head is a place to break that um, cycle the, where my narrative is just taking me deeper into the fear and the anxiety and one of the places for me is to get artistic for me it's musically um, What's music, what role does either writing or performing or playing music um, help you get out of cycles, Kathleen? Well, first of all, if I'm feeling like I'm in a cycle of, say, man, I've listened to the news so much today and now I'm like, my brain is full and I'm freaked out. Um, finding, usually finding a worship song that's filled with scripture or some sort of universal truth that helps me, like you said, step back and take a, a look at the big picture. Just being reminded that my feelings about it are not the entirety of the story. God knows more than I do. Um, and being like Linda said in her poem, like the mountain, you're grounded. Um, and I, I think stepping into a piece of music can give you the space because you're sort of, when you're listening to music or playing music, you're opening up a space for your mind to just rest a little bit. You're not trying to figure stuff out. You're not trying to solve a problem. You're just in some ways allowing God to come in and talk to you and speak to you. And you're also kind of allowing your emotions or your thoughts to order themselves and just rest for a minute. And I think um, having music uh, a meditation time or even just driving with, you know, with music playing or sitting in the backyard um, allows your brain to sort of 
go to a, a, I'd say a meditative place or even just a restful space. Um, scripture is really important. I, I, I just love songs with scripture in them or old hymns that mm -hmm. have truths that are just really well put, you know? Um, and sometimes not requiring a lot from us like to respond, but a lot of reassurance, almost like a nursery rhyme coming over you, you know, like mm. this is this is something that I know deeply and this is words that I've known forever, like be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Like all of these words in this song are so old and I've sung them a million times. And they just remind me of who I am and I don't need to fear. Like now is I I can just rest. Sorry, that was a long answer. <laughs> no, that was a good answer. Good answer. Yeah, and as someone who isn't the musician that you are, um, but when you're leading us in music, and I get to sing along in my voice that isn't isn't anyone isn't one that anyone wants to find a microphone, but you you break that space for me uh, in the best possible way when um, you're singing, and then I get to just join in at my um, ability, then suddenly I'm broken out of kind of the, the to do's like the, the worry that might be in my mind. And that's just a really freeing space that music, I think God gives us music to open us into that space. Yeah. Bart is an artist. Any thoughts on art and that sacred space it offers us in the midst of the storm? Well, I think any creative endeavor is a, is a big help during a time like this, actually during any time. Uh, I think we're so used to staying in our sort of uh, analytical mind that, and we watch the news and we do all this and our analytical mind can turn into a frenzied mind. Mm -hmm. So the creative process I'm learning as a new artist, five years now of painting, uh, it, is, it, it puts you in a different space like Kathleen, you were just saying, it, it, it puts you, uh, it's a non-linear space. And I think God created us as um, very complex yet simplified beings. And one of, the, one of the places that God tries to get through to us, but that we're so ill-equipped to receive the message is that creative space. When, when we sort of set the, uh, the judging mind aside and open ourselves to something else, I, for example, I like uh, when I was preparing this this talk, uh, you know, with the horse racing and all of that. Uh, I told Linda as I went out on my walk to kind of do my final prayer and preparation for. It, I said, I don't have a good story. I just don't have a story. I said, Do you have any stories? You can because sometimes she knows my stories better than I do. Uh, hers are more truthful versions usually. <laughs> <laughs> they, they aren't as good as stories, uh, but but anyway. And she couldn't come up with one. And, and, and she said, well, what are you going to do? And I said, you know, I just have to trust the process. I always have one when I need it. And so I went on this about an hour long walk and I was writing little things on three by five cards that came to me. And I literally prayed, Lord, give me, give me something to illustrate this. And that image of that moment, which, I mean, I was 31 years old. That's 40 years ago. I don't think I've told that story in 20 years. And it came back, it came to me and I thought, how does this fit? And then as I thought about it, it fit. So for me being on that walk, saying that prayer, opening my heart, uh, uh, it, it put me less in an analytical space and more in an open space. So art isn't just painting or music. It can be writing, it can be gardening, it can be uh, arranging your home. Linda's a tremendous home uh, maker and decorator. And she uses that gift. So I would say find what what nurtures you in a nonlinear kind of black and white way. Mm -hmm. Spend some time doing it, whatever it is. And we have the time right now. Now is the time. We do. We do. Yeah. Something that struck me about the story on the horse you're riding along and I'm picturing you galloping down in Colorado and you've told that story, it's told a different story about a, a horse running away with a rider on top. And the gist of that story is someone's riding, you know, off through the fictitious old time kingdom and someone, you know, on the land sees them riding by and he says, where are you going? And he says, I don't know, ask the horse. And, 
And I thought your story was a beautiful nuance to that, where I pictured someone asking you, where are you going? You said, I don't know, ask the horse. And then in the midst of trying to control the horse and you let go of control, and that gave me a different experience of the frenziedness of being off at a dead run on a horse versus being, well, the horse is running, yeah, it's a but different on horseback, there is a piece in the midst of, exactly. we don't know where it's going, because we don't know where this is going right now. But wanted, getting that sense of peace is what you're, you're guiding us into. I want to say at that moment, if I had known it, I might have said, trust the horse, Luke, trust the horse. No. <laughs> well... <laughs> Another analogy, a songwriter that we like, David Wilcox, he talks about putting a message. Yeah, that's right. He talks about putting a message in a bottle and putting it in the ocean. And he says, well, the ocean can be trusted. And he's yeah. speaking of the ocean in terms of God and God's divinity in the midst of that control saying God can be trusted yeah. in the midst of our little peace in it. Well, and there's something folks can do. If you don't know the singer songwriter David Wilcox, you know just Google his music, and each one is a tremendous story. Uh, and he, he's he, over the years he became a, a good and close friend, and it's such an honor. He I was like his biggest fan, and then I got to meet him, and then we became friends. He and his wife, and it's such an honor to be around the guy because he's so creative. It will I, I guarantee you, if you listen to some of his music it will be helpful to you. And there are two David Wilcoxes out there. If you Google them, there's a Canadian David Wilcox and there's an American David Wilcox singer. So this is the American <laughs> singer songwriter who lives in Asheville. Didn't know that. Yeah, <laughs> I found the wrong one one time. <laughs> you know, going back to the, the story for me, and I don't know if it came across in the talk, but fighting that horse was such a visceral uh, experience. I mean, I was trying to, guide him and I thought my life depended on me being in charge of the horse because if you know anything about horses they always tell you never be afraid of a horse never show your fear always be in control and so I was trying to muscle that horse in as I shared and it was impossible and it for me there are times in our life when we can't do much and and as I said do what you can do but and let it go because I'm not saying let go in despair or let go in, oh, gee, there's nothing for me to let go in trust. I mean, because honestly, God is in charge. And I, I was talking to somebody on the phone that I called today, and she said to me, uh, you know, I'm, I'm wondering if there isn't a larger message in all of this. And I said, well, what do you think uh, that might be? I said, I think there is. And she said, well, what else could make the whole world potentially wake up spiritually mm. the entire world all the different nations all the different cultures all rich and poor leaders and 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 followers it, what other thing could possibly stop us in our tracks and at least in my lifetime there's been nothing that the entire world has had to stop and, and, and it's not a war it's not a war as in the traditional sense and it's made us all think at least now some that drives into fear and frenzy and panic but hopefully for many around the world it teaches the one thing that keeps coming back to me is our interconnectedness i mean it, like that that poem pandemic that i read in one of the talks a few times back it, surely you know by now how how interconnected we are i mean mm -hmm. how could we deny that, that now so the scripture has been teaching that forever I mean, it, it's very clear that all of creation is interconnected, that we as, as members of the body of Christ are like members in a physical body, where we're just connected. And I think in the whole universe, I mean, I think we, we're just a small model of that. So what, if, if we begin to realize that we're interconnected, how would that change what we do? So that, for example, love your neighbor as yourself. You know, the way you love your neighbor will actually come back around towards you, mm -hmm. good or bad. Yep. It really is an interconnection. Uh, there really are consequences to our actions, not just to ourselves, but to others, and not just the others we, we see. Um, I'm, I've been reading, uh, rereading a book about the John Adams, our, our uh, second president of the United States. Did I mention this in one of the other things? 
a great book by uh, McCullough. Uh, I read it years ago and um, I reread it here during this time. I got time on my hands. I thought, well, what are some books I'd like to reread? And one thing that's hit me is that the actions those early founders of the United States, and by the way, they were not like all unified. They were fighting like cats and dogs. So this idea that they were so unified and were so disunified just really isn't true. They were, they were struggling to get these 13 colonies to unify and to form our revolution in our, in our country. But what hit, hit me looking back is the consequences of those decisions that those, in this case, it was men uh, made have affected all of us to this day, 250 years later. It was such an interconnection from their thinking, they've been studying and thinking about political philosophy, to their writing, they wrote things like the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, uh, uh, and some other documents that are really crucial that we don't even think about anymore, but they form who we are. So our actions today may not seem very important, but they are. How we treat our children, how we treat our families, whether we stay isolated in a negative way, not, not self-isolating in, a, in a pro, an appropriate way, but isolated, like not in contact. But this this uh, video conversation, or whatever we're calling this thing, uh, it's an attempt to stay connected because we are. Thanks, Bart. I think you put it really well. So thanks everyone. Kathleen, anything else on your heart at this moment? No. I think next time we do this, we should have Kathleen at her piano. And then if, if she has a music, no, I'm serious. If you have like a little song, well, it could be a big song. It doesn't have to be a little song, but a song, then you could, you could close us out that way. I think that's a cool idea. Great. I like my idea. <laughs> All right. Thanks everybody for watching. Bye-bye.